Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about the giver? Stick around and find out. It's mysterious. All right. I don't know. This is kind of a quiet movie. It it wants to uh, wants to bring out some kind of mysterious theme in my mind, but the music in the movie didn't sound anything like that. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blood Productions with an uncut review of The Giver. Uh, in a seemingly perfect community without war, pain, suffering, differences, or choice, a young boy is chosen to learn from an elderly man about the true pain and pleasure of the real world. So this is a, like a, like a, I want to say dystopian, fe- no, 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 it's a utopian dystopian future. Basically, this big event called the Ruin took place, after which uh, they decided to like just remove emotions and feelings and to, to a large degree choice out of society and so everyone at a certain age is given the role that they're assigned the role that they will fulfill for the rest of their lives and uh, one 18 year old young man named Jonas uh, discovers that he has been chosen to basically uh, learn from the past because everyone's memory of of human history has been wiped and only one person in each generation serves as the caretaker of that information, uh, who's chosen to to feel and chosen to um, learn and recall memories of of human history. Um, and so this is uh, it, let's talk about the story script and the pacing a little bit. This is a quiet concept movie. Now it's not boring. I don't want to say it's boring, but it's more interesting than it is involving. I cared about the community and kind of what would happen to them, whether or not they would change, whether or not they would set aside the the uh, the harmful ideals that they've been holding on to that's really stagnated them as human beings. I wanted them to grow and come out of that, but I didn't really care about any individual person. So I don't want to say that it's character driven, even though it's sometimes I feel like it wants to believe that it is. Uh, it's really more of a concept movie um, that you're likely to walk away from saying, boy, that was interesting rather than, oh my gosh, you know, wow, that was an experience, you know. Um, let's talk about the actors a little bit. We got Jeff Bridges, um, who plays the 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 older generation of what's called the the receiver who receives these memories he's now passing these memories on um to the to, to the young jonas we've got meryl streep who is the eldest head honcho of the elders and she's kind of like the provides the uh antagonism in the movie like no we have to do things the way we've always done them that's meryl streep's job uh we got brenton thwaites i don't know this guy from anywhere he's the 18 year old lead character jonas um, we've got Odea Rush, who is kind of the romantic interest of the movie for him. And we've got Katie Holmes as the other recognizable face who plays his mother. Uh, the, the roles are really uh, not defined very well in this movie because family relationships we take for granted are kind of sterilized in this movie. In fact, emotions in general, the highs and lows, I should say, are kind of sterilized in this movie because the characters are all required to take these daily doses, these injections that deaden their emotions. Sound familiar, Equilibrium fans? You better believe I was making comparisons to Equilibrium during this whole movie. Um, but what Equilibrium does better, I mean, apart from being like this action you know, thinking man's, you know, sci-fi movie is that it allows for some of the greater, some, it allows for more emotion in the characters. The, the characters all in this entire community had their emotions deadened to the point of being just like artificial, superficial, weird, you know, and stuff like that. And that's part of the reason it was hard to invest in them. Now, what I really would have liked for them to do is after some key characters begin feeling emotions, as is inevitable in a movie with, that's based in this concept, I would love for those characters that are feeling to really give performances that uh, that pull me in to... Uh, I would have liked some dramatic heavy hitters in this. I felt like they cast some, uh, maybe some rising stars, you know, some people that fit the roles, that, had, that were beautiful young actors and stuff, and maybe they are dramatic heavy hitters just waiting to happen, but it didn't come out in their performances. Maybe it was the direction in the movie. I don't know, you know, where... Uh, uh, you know where we should point to see the the cause for that, but whatever the reason, 
I didn't feel emotionally invested in uh, in in their performances. I think that uh, artistically, what they what would have been a better choice was to really let them cut loose with these new emotions that they're discovering, and just so that we could really feel their pain, their fear, their anxiety, you know, their their passion, their love, their compassion, you know, all those different things. I would have really loved to feel right along with them, and and the movie just didn't bring me to that point. Um, as far as like the uh, the stunts and visuals, they're not pushing visuals at all in this movie. Uh, the visual effects are just enough to get the job done. They start out with a black and white filter on on everything, so there's no color for like the first I want to say 10, 15 minutes. Color is slowly introduced as Jonas begins experiencing feelings and other sensations that he hadn't had before. But you know we've seen that before. We saw that in uh, what was that? I can't even remember the movie. I, I think I saw half of it with a uh, dude who was Spider-Man before he was Spider- Pleasantville, that's what it's called, where he started out black and white, and then as feelings and stuff are introduced, and then, then color gets introduced and stuff like that. So I felt like that device has been used before. You know, it was fine. I, I got what they were, they were they were telling us, what they were going for, but it didn't feel very creative to me. What I would be interested in doing, you know, as, as film, and especially home video, is being defined more and more um, by, like, the clarity of the picture, you know? Like, we got 1080p, and now we got, like, these 4K televisions or whatever you know that are going to be increasing the uh, uh, the fidelity of the picture. I'd be interested in seeing this kind of an idea presented in terms of focus or in terms of fidelity, you know, uh, or at least fidelity in addition to coloring. You know, it would have been cool when he was experiencing emotions for the first time to introduce color and make it really rich color, but at the same time also you know, increase the the uh, clarity of the picture. Like maybe just keep it slightly fuzzy all before that, and maybe do something similar with the sound. You know, I'm, mental note to myself as an audio drama producer that that would be kind of a cool device to have a slightly muffled, slightly you know less clear sound, uh, and then when you do something like this that introduces sensations to a character that they hadn't had before, to suddenly increase the treble maybe, or just bring more crystal clarity to everything. So so I would have been interested in in some different choices to represent that discovery of emotion and sensation. Um, the music and sound in this movie uh, is fine, but it's forgettable. Uh, so moving on now to relevance. You know, is there anything in this movie that uh, that provokes potentially worthwhile thought or conversation? And I think that there is. It won't provoke it in everybody, but I, I think it is. There, there's a strong tendency for it there. Um, the, the big question, I think, that's examined in the film that's really central to the resolution of the plot is free will. Is free will and the range of emotions that come with it worth the cruelty and the suffering that's caused by humanity? That's a big question. There are kind of some extreme views here. Now, in a movie that's exploring this kind of idea, the views can often be even more extreme. You know, you'll have one side that's saying, you know, no, we got to be free to just follow our heart and do what we want to do and just murder people, you know? I mean, they don't say that last part, but really that's, you know, that's the natural consequence of living this kind of life where you're just like following your heart and just do what your passion tells you to do, you know? And then you've got, predictably, the other side, it's like, no, all emotions are evil. All choice is evil. We must cut it all out and be freaking robots, you know? And, um, you know, I don't think either one of those views, obviously, is the right one. Um, in this movie, they, uh, the, 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 the control freaks were a little bit more like that classic representation. In fact, one of the characters at one point says, when given the choice, humans will always choose evil every time. And I'm like, really? Is that really your view? Can you just be a little bit more balanced, you know, so that it's not so obvious that you have the bad view, the wrong view in this movie. Um, but I, I was grateful that of those that took the other position of like wanting to have emotions, wanting to have choice, that they did acknowledge very um, uh, poignantly and dramatically at some points um, that with choice comes pain, comes suffering, comes cruelty. Um, at first that cruelty is represented as a harm to animals. And I was like, really, is that how they're going to represent the potential cruelty of cruelty of humanity? Um, but uh, they, they later introduced more uh, results of human choice that, uh, that really are, uh, you know, that are harmful to humans and that are really, uh, really just, just, uh, you know, tragic and, uh, about real human suffering, you know? So, so I was glad that, you know, <laughs> that they moved on from, uh, suffering by animals, even though obviously I think that's terrible, you know? Um, anyway, let's see here. Uh, the other question I think that the movie brings up is, um, our faith and love emotions. Um, now I don't think that the movie really tries to ask this question. Rather, it 
it portrays faith and love as emotions, which makes me want to say, whoa, 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 really? Is that how we're going to define faith? Unfortunately, that's how faith is usually defined in uh, popular culture. Faith is thought of as this thing that you just kind of, you know, you just believe even though you don't have any good reasons to believe. You just, you just believe with all your feelings. You just force yourself to believe. And, uh, you know, I guess maybe people, you know, a lot of people, you know, have that view of faith, but scripturally speaking, faith, the, 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 the Greek word for faith is much more like our word for trust, you know, where trust is not by nature blind. Faith is not by nature blind, you know, um, but, uh, but, you know, oftentimes we just think of faith as blind faith, even though we don't use the expression blind faith, uh, we, we, think of all faith as being blind, but that's not the case. It's certainly not scripturally. Uh, faith is is like trust. It uh, It's something that can and should be earned um, based on the the evidence that's available. You know, has someone earned your trust? Has, has, has someone earned the faith that you're placing in them? Um, and then also love. You know, love obviously has uh, emotional components, but I would argue that, that love is a virtue. Love is a choice. Uh, love is a value. It is not simply an emotion because emotions come and go, you know, with our feelings and all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I would disagree that love is that kind of a thing, um, at least not love of any value. Um, yeah, when I think of love, I think of, uh, of, of love that is a choice, that certainly a lot of emotion comes along with it, but it is a choice, it's a commitment, it's a virtue. Um, so I think the idea of, you know, faith and love as presented in this movie are mm, a little wonky, uh, but, you know, because of how they're presented, it might stimulate some worthwhile thought. Uh, now, a little further down on the list of what things I think this movie might likely make you think about is abortion. Um, there is a possible, and I'm not even sure at all about this, but there is a very small chance that there is a pro-life abortion stance being taken by the writer of this film that's intentional or not. Maybe the author, if they randomly ended up seeing this video, would say, are you insane? I would never, you know, go along with the pro-life, you know, uh, stance on abortion, you know. But what's interesting is in this movie, uh, these, um, and this is a bit of a spoiler. Uh, it's, it's a, I think it's a minor spoiler. It's not a big shock when you see it in the movie, you know. Um, but, uh, but in this movie, um, there's, uh, the babies, for some reason, are categorized at birth. They're weighed, and if they don't weigh enough, or if they're not strong enough, they get released. And, you know, you find out that releasing is is killing, you know, uh, later on in the movie. Um, so sorry, that is a bit of a spoiler. I'll try to put a note in the notes that there are some minor spoilers in this uh, in this video. Um, and uh, so, so what we have here is a baby that because it doesn't weigh enough, because it's not quite strong enough, it is killed. It is murdered. And the when the, when the main character discovers this, you know, he's like, we haven't gotten rid of murder. We've just given a new name to it. So he was calling that act murder. Now, what's interesting is that there are some folks that choose after discovering that their child has uh, Down syndrome or some other, uh, you know, uh, condition that's just going to make their life, make the child's life and make the parent's life much more challenging and difficult. There are parents that will, uh, that will choose to abort that child. Um, and so, and, and the, the pro-life position would say, no, you shouldn't abort that. That's, that's a, that's life. That's life. And, and what you're doing there is, is murder. Um, and so it would be interesting to find out that the author does not have a pro-life view in mind or in their heart at some point, even if that they didn't intend to express it, because I can see a, a, a metaphor being used here by people who take the pro-life position to say, boy, you know, see, this is an example of what we're talking about, you know, when, when we're, we're talking about how this is murder and people are just giving another name to it. So um, I don't want to get into a big old stink and conversation about the uh, uh, pro-life, uh, pro-choice uh, whole issues, but uh, I just wanted to mention that I do think that is potentially a theme that was in mind when this movie was being written, or it's based on a book, so maybe when the book was being written, but uh, I don't know. If you see the movie, you let me know in the comments if you think that was intentional or not, or what you think is going on there. I'd be curious what your take on that is. Um, okay, well, the movie's rated PG-13 for mature thematic images and uh, some sci-fi action violence. Uh, in the end, I give it a quality score of 7.5 out of 10. You know, it's an average experience for me. It was interesting, but I wanted more emotional involvement and intensity in my experience. If I were a time travel, I'd go back and tell myself, Pater, uh, rent or catch this on TV if the premise sounds interesting to you, um, but, you know, don't run out and, and think you need to see it. Uh, in terms of relevance, I give it an 8.0 out of 10. Uh, it doesn't demand thought, uh, but 
I, I do think it still lends itself to some thought if if you kind of want to go there. So uh, there you have it, my thoughts on The Giver. Please do uh, like, share, and subscribe to encourage me. I'm a, I'm a sensitive, insecure artiste, and so I'd love your encouragement and know that you want more of these kinds of videos. So please like, share, and subscribe. Also, leave comments below. Let, let me know uh, what you liked or what you'd like to see or what you'd like to see changed, except for better editing, because there's no way that's going to happen. Um, boom! For more info about our scoring system and tons of other content and community, visit Christian geekcentral.com. I hope you'll come join us there soon as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. But, um...